uh, give it a rest is the headline uh, in the sun this morning uh, because they've got a story saying no more PC PCs finally so Ella Braverman uh, has told the police to wake up uh, and stop being so woke if you don't mind. Uh, six things she wants to woke officers to stop doing. One, don't stand by while statues get pulled down. Two, don't hand out drinks to eco-vandals causing hell for commuters. Three, don't take the knee. Four, don't dance or take selfies with protesters. Five, don't police free speech. And six, don't get trained in contested views like critical race theory. You'd think most of those things would be pretty obvious, wouldn't you? Let's talk to Harry Miller, former police officer, of course, and founder of the Fair Cop Group. Harry, very good morning to you. Yeah, I was, at the, I was at the meeting yesterday and it was fantastic to hear Sola Braverman um, clarify these things. We asked her directly, what does it mean to be political? And she said, I'll give some examples. Critical race theory, gender ideology, they are political. Now, if you want to be an eco-zealot or you want to be a hunt saboteur or you want to be a gender ideologist, there are a thousand jobs out there where you can fill your boots. Mm. But what you cannot do is join the police. And if you do join the police with those views, then what you have to do is keep your gob firmly shut. We do not need to know what the police think about these issues which are political. Now, when we've asked as fair cop, why are you engaging in political activity, Chief Constable, by painting your police car in the colours of a rainbow or taking the knee? They've said repeatedly, that's not political. That's not politics at all. That's equality and diversity. Yes. Well, now we have the definitive answer from the Home Secretary. These things are unequivocally political. Mm. Police have no business whatsoever in doing or engaging in any of them. So we see this as an absolute victory for fair cop because it was our question which got these the, these clarifications out. Well, I'm so glad we've got you on to, to, to explain all that to us, Harry, as well. Because the thing is, of course, it's the left, isn't it? It's the wokeists who always say it's not political uh, because they think anyone who doesn't think the way they think uh, is some kind of a maniac, some kind of a, you know, murdering criminal that must be locked up and kept away from children and all that kind of thing, you know, because if you don't like taking the knee, there's obviously something wrong with you. So they probably, in their heads, don't think it is a political stance. They just think it's a decent thing to do. Yeah, well, what, what they do is they say it's about human rights. Yes. And, and since, um, since the oath of attestation was changed, I think, in 2002, 2003, the police have been obliged to uphold not only the law and the king's peace, but also human rights. But the problem with that is that most human rights are contested. Mm. And the police cannot predict where a human right is going to, is going to become law or not become law because mm. it's contested. So until a human right... No matter who's shouting for it and who's supporting it, and even if that human right eventually turns into the right side of history, the police have no business whatsoever in supporting that contested human right until the point that it becomes part and parcel of British law. Mm. Because right up until that, that point, it's political, and the police must not engage in it. They must not. They must be absolutely vanilla they have to be utterly neutral. They have to take an example from her, her late majesty, the Queen. We never knew a damn thing about what she thought. Mm. She smiled, she waved, she was nice to everybody, and that's what we want from the police. Yeah. Of course, not criminals. We don't want the police to be nice to criminals. No. Well, we want the, the police to track them down and throw them in jail. And that was another great thing that the Home Secretary said yesterday. Not only are we getting more police officers back on the beat, but she wants them to use stop and search. Mm. She wants them to she wants them to um, show us the body cam footage when there are contested claims about police activity. Because we have a Home Secretary now who believes in policing. So the Home Secretary and I, their cop, we are absolutely one on this. And it was great because she stopped, she shook my hand, she thanked me, and she said, fantastic work, Harry. You're, you and Fair Cop are doing amazing work. So we're on the same side, and yeah. we're pushing it up the door. No, you definitely are, and that's a good thing. But surely you also have to get to the root of what this problem is and where it came from, because I saw, as probably you did, uh, Lee Anderson, the Tory MP, yesterday uh, grilling old uh, Sir Mark Rowley down in uh, uh, Parliamentary Committee about why he wasn't doing more to arrest protesters and about why he wasn't doing more to stop, you know, kind of misogyny in the police force and all of that. Because I wonder who, in the first instance, would have given the Metropolitan Police the idea of taking the knee in the first place. I mean, who on earth would have given that order? 
Well, exactly. But this is what happens when you cozy up and associate with political ideologies. So you cozy up to Black Lives Matter, you then start adopting mm. the political Marxism of Black Lives Matter. You cuddle up to Stonewall, you then start adopting the, the, the general election manifesto of Stonewall. And that's why the police code of ethics is very clear. You cannot engage in politics, neither can you associate with those who are engaging mm. in politics in case it gives the impression that you are not going to be able to operate without fear or favor. So Ella Braverman was very clear about that. It gives the wrong impression. If, you, if you're seen taking the knee or giving cups of tea to eco-zealots who've glued themselves to, to, uh, to, to the tarmac, it gives the wrong impression. What we need is a police force that is apolitical, non-political, politically impartial, politically mm. vanilla, that serves without fear and favour and gets on with the job of catching criminals. That's what we need. And we've still got, you know, big differences, haven't we? Because you look at how uh, those protesters were dealt with at the Grand National by Merseyside police in what I think most of us would agree was a magnificent uh, <laughs> a sort of explanation of what police should do and what they should, how they should do it. You know, they were all moaning later that they were, their arms were being twisted and, you know, their wrists were being hurt by the handcuffs. Well, good. That's exactly what should happen. But meanwhile, in London, just the other day, um, a guy gets out of his van to try and move some Just Stop Oil protesters and the police start nicking him. Yeah, that's, that's because the police have taken on board an ideology. There, there is a higher... Yeah, but they haven't done it in Merseyside, but they have done it in London. Yeah, well, because the, the, the Met basically ruled by uh, the, the ideology of Sadiq Khan. In Merseyside, they're, they're a little more sensible. I mean, yeah. they're entirely captured by gender ideology, but on other issues, they seem to be mm. relatively, relatively sound. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that's why we need to remove everything that strikes as political. Everything, if it, if it looks political, it is political. Yes. And that, that's the standard. That's the standard. If there is a contested argument, if there are opposing sides of a debate, if there is a flag and colours which are routinely paraded by one side, then it is a political issue and the police have to be absolutely neutral. Mm. And then what they have to do is they need to show the public that they are serving without fear or favour by dealing with absolute impartiality to these ludicrous lawbreakers. Yeah, absolutely right. And what did you make of that, uh, I don't know if you saw that video of Rishi Sunak, uh, being driven somewhere the other day uh, and in front of him were uh, a sort of phalanx of cops on bikes followed by some rather tubby looking people sort of jogging very slowly um, ahead of a, a fleet of Range Rovers. I mean it's one of the most ridiculous things I think I've ever seen. I was likening it to some kind of Monty Python sketch. I mean you're a former police officer. What did you make of it? Well, here, we go, here we go again. Kim Young Rishi, what's going on? <laughs> I mean, this is, this, is, this is not what we do in England. Cy you know, fat cyclists on right. bikes. Right. It, 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 it's comedic. I, I mean, I, expe I expected I, what I, was I expected them to start sort of standing on the saddle or something and doing sort of, you know, uh, bizarre uh, acrobatics. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, I, I didn't believe it was a true video when I first saw yeah. it. I thought it's got to be a, it's got to be a spoof right. because this is how British politicians behave, mm. let alone British police. We're yeah. not like that. We're not Kim Young. We're, we're, we're not Joe Biden or Donald Trump. We don't do this. Mm. It's just very, very weird. Anyway, listen, Harry, great to talk to you and great work. I shall congratulate you as well uh, for doing all you've done, uh, for making the police wake up and be less woke, for heaven's sake. It's got to be a good thing. Harry Miller there from uh, the Fair Cop Group.